welcome back to the channel. So today what we're gonna do is actually replace the compressor on this condensing unit. So this is a, set up a little bit differently than any other unit that I've ever seen where the compressor and condenser are actually part of the evaporator. Not unlike a Norlake unit, but those are actually a lot bigger and sit on the ceiling. This is a tiny little condenser unit that sits underneath a reach-in, almost like a regular true style reach-in. It's a double door, uh, double glass door. Uh, I believe it's sliders. I'm almost positive it's sliders um, for drinks. It's a drink cooler is basically what it is. So I was able to, rather than replacing the compressor at my client's building, which is an office building, and this unit happens to be on the second floor all the way across from where the entrance is, um, I was able to just take the entire thing out, bring it back to my house, and we can actually take some time, and I can video replacing the compressor, going through it, um, through most of the major steps. So why don't we go ahead and get started, and we'll start pulling this unit apart and getting the new compressor in. Okay, so we are going to be replacing this compressor today, and uh, this is a little bit of an unusual circumstance where I can actually do this at home. So if you look, the condenser is right here, compressor, condenser, condenser fan motor, there's the dryer, there's a cap tube, and the evaporator is actually attached to it. So this is pretty much a self-contained modular unit. This compressor is locked rotor, will not stop. I tried a three-in-one, I still didn't get it going. It's not electrically shorted, um, but obviously it is not working. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to uh, unsweat or unbraze a compressor and braze in a new one. I've been an advocate of soft soldering stuff forever. I still do it, but I want to show you the correct way to braze using a nitrogen purge uh, to negate all of that little flaky carbon buildup. And also just to show you how much stuff you got to drag in. Now the refrigerant is already out of this. I've already recovered the refrigerant and turned in the cylinder Friday. Today is uh, Saturday. Um, so as you can see, we're zero, zero on our gauges. But in addition to all this, you would also have to have or bring in at some point your recovery tank and recovery machine. So we got the refrigerant, that's my soldering bag, vacuum pump, acetylene, nitrogen, that's a, a, um, a refrigerant weight scale, tool bag, vacuum gauge, new compressor, new dryer, acid test kit, and acid scavenger. So, uh, you know, you gotta lug some stuff in there. So, right now I have all the refrigerant out, and the way I do that is, obviously, use the recovery machine, but the way I get into the system is to use bullet piercing valves. Now these are two I use for just recovering refrigerant, so I reuse these, so these will be taken off and reused on another unit. A lot of people like to use those, uh, the quick pierce, the, the vice grips. It's like a vice grip with a piercing valve on the end. The only problem I've had with those, I used to have them, I used to carry them in the truck. I'll be honest with you, I never really used them because, not say in this unit, but units that are hermetically sealed, okay, that you need a piercing valve for, usually they're wedged into tiny places, and a lot of times you can't get that big honking vice grip in there. So you just use these and uh, just put a... Um, an Allen bit in uh, my little impact uh, driver and just zip that sucker right in there. If you can, if not, you got a regular Allen wrench you can get in there. They fit in tighter spots. So anyway, so right now, what we're going to do is I'm already el electrically disconnected because I attempted to install a 3-in-1. So what we need to do now is heat up and pull out this tube, heat up and pull out this tube. So the discharge line, suction line, and on the suction line is, was that cork tape? I, I hate this stuff with a passion. So, even though you're brazing, do yourself a favor and clean your tubing. Take a piece of sand cloth, take you two seconds. It makes unbrazing and rebrazing much easier. Also, make sure that you know what, where, which way your flame is going and what you're brazing around. So there was a sensor that went into this hole, so I removed it, so that way I have no chance of burning it. These lines here are gonna be behind my flame, so we should have no issue with that. And then the only other thing is these four screws, two here and two there, and then we can pop that compressor right out. So let me get set up on the tripod. I'll probably spin this thing around so it's a better angle, and we'll hook up a nitrogen tank, and we'll unbrace those joints. Okay, so we're gonna 
take off this suction line first and just a little trick so this armor flex is wrapped around this and the armor flex is too close to the joint and you don't want to catch that stuff on fire because it smokes and it stinks it smells like burning hair so what you can do is take a take your tubing cutter and just use it as a clamp to hold that armor flex back All right now I'll be using a, I believe this is a three yeah a number three torch tip I usually use a, an 11 as my regular go-to, but that's kind of big for that tube in there. So I'm going to use that. As far as nitrogen goes, you don't need that much. I have my nitrogen tank open. I have my regulator set. And you can see right there, that's pretty much as much nitrogen as going in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the valve that's closer to that compressor, which is this process tube. So it's going to get... The entire inside of this compressor and it's gonna fill up that tube and we need a place for it to go because we don't want to build pressure and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the high side so if you see here that hand wheel is open now if I crack this high here there's my nitrogen coming out of the other side of my system so I'm not gonna be building pressure and I can unbrace that without any fear of any of that buildup on the inside of that pipe so we're just going to get that red hot, make sure that we don't have any fuzz, it's just fuzz stuck to something, nothing that we're going to burn. And I have to go in it from this way, so sorry if that picture doesn't come out very clear. And heat that up to red hot, watch that, that braze melt, and then I'm going to pull up on it with a pair of channel locks. Helps if I open my acetylene tank. Heating the fat side of that joint. Alright, you can see it's starting to melt there. I'm just going to grab it gently. Pull that straight up. And there it is. A little bit of a puff there, so probably had a little bit too much nitrogen flow, but that's not too bad. And we're out. And if I'm going to detach you and we're going to look straight down into that pipe and you're going to, sh you're going to see that there's no, none of that flaky carbon buildup. Okay, I know it might be a little hard to see, but I don't know if you can see into that tube there. There's none of that flaky telltale signs of being brazed. That okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with this tubing here. We're going to unbraze and pull it off. A lot of times, if you're able to cut it, it's a little bit easier, at least in my opinion. But you can see they have the 90 right where the discharge line is. So if you cut this, you have to cut it back here and then either put a fitting or rebend it. So we're just going to heat that up and pop that right off. We just do have to be a little bit careful and aware of what we're around in this entire tray here is plastic. So obviously we don't want to aim the, uh, the torch down there. So... And do the same idea, nitrogen is still flowing. Okay. Give it a nudge. And we're off okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick acid test so we're gonna test the oil and see if there's any acid present in it and the way we do that is with one of these little test kits uh, you can see there's a lot of stuff in there but it's actually only used once so we're gonna figure out what type of oil that we have in here which is 134a so this is POE so as you can see these little vials mark either POE or mineral and alkyl benzene. Mineral and alkyl benzene oil will be in your older units, R22 units, R12, 502, that sort of thing. 99.9% .9 of your newer units going to have some sort of POE oil in it. So we're going to open this up. I'm actually going to take this little cap here off. I'm going to pour all of that into this 
Now they should turn purple. Ooh, pretty. Okay, so now we want to fill up this entire jar with oil from the compressor. So, all right, I needed to get a funnel to put that in. So, that's what it came out as. That looks more orange to, to, than yellow to me. So, by the thing on the back here, it says orange is marginal. So, um, rather than going crazy with the RX-11 flush, I really don't think this needs it. We're going to add some acid scavenger to our new compressor. And all this does, uh, it gives you a little chart of tonnage and how bad the acid is. It gives a little chart. So you just follow it. And it goes by how many, the amount of oil and uh, light to moderate acid, severe acid after flushing with RX-11, which we're not going to do. So we're doing the light to moderate acid. So the new compressor will have... Uh, up to one gallon. We're less than a gallon, so we're gonna put one one bottle in there, and we should be pretty good, pretty much good to go. So, what I'm also gonna do too, just to help me out a little bit, is once I have the cap tube removed, which are the cap tube dryer removed, which I'm gonna do right now, is I'm just gonna take that nitrogen and I'm gonna blow it through the condenser and get any of the old oil or anything that might be sitting in there. We'll get as much of that out as possible, but we're not gonna go so far as to do a flush. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this old dryer. And the way we're gonna do this is, this right here is, is uh, steel, this is copper. So to go from the steel to the copper, it needs to be silver soldered, which is what this joint is. So rather than deal with the copper to steel joint by cutting back the steel here, this piece here is swedged over that steel anyway. So I would have to put a coupling or some sort there anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the copper. So we're going to cut this copper. So I need access to it. So what I'm going to do is just take a pair of dikes and cut off that tube. Now I can get a tube and cut it in there close. I know you guys are in the shadow right there, but there's nothing I can do about that at the moment. Okay, so my new joint will be right there on the copper. And this cap tube, we're going to remove now. You, you can try unbrazing this and pull it out, but you're just going to end up with a big glob of braze on the end of your cap tube. And this is inserted probably until about here. So what you can do, very gently, take a pair of dikes, go past that solder, that braze joint, and all we're doing, we're not even really squeezing, we're just putting a score line in there, okay? And then we're gonna grab right there, and we're gonna bend against that score line, and that's gonna break. And you can see the inside of that cap tube right there and a lot of times with 134a the cap tube clogs and you'll be able to see it looks almost like a white scale build up on the inside of there that looks nice and clean so we should be pretty good with that obviously we won't be able to 100 percent find out until we actually put refrigerant in this thing so right now all i'm going to do is take my nitrogen and hold it up against here and we're going to blow out through the discharge line and then i'm going to do the same thing with the suction line out through here we're going to get as much of the old oil out as possible. Okay, so the way this compressor is set up is up here is my suction line. Down here is my discharge port and here is my process tube. You can see the port is a little bit different than the original one because the original one's an OEM that came out of the top like a unicorn. This one, I'm going to have to bend that piece down and in. Not a big thing. So we have to put nitrogen into this compressor. So what we're going to do right now is I just have a little process tube attached to my gauges here. Okay, and we have nitrogen flowing through it. You can hear it there. You can do a, maybe a little bit more. And what we're going to do is just put that into the suction line, which is putting nitrogen into the body of this compressor and also coming out there. Then we put our process tube in, and now we can braise that without worrying about any scale forming. So the rod I'm using is just plain old uh, Dynaflow. And I'm just going to braise that in. So he 
eat the fat side first. Start to see that glow and may or may not show up on the camera. And all we need to do is that. Okay, we're going to let that cool down and then through that port I am going to add our acid scavenger. Okay, so now that we're mounted, what we're going to do is the opposite, the way that we took it out. So what we're going to do right now, here's our process tube. We're going to put our Schrader pin in now, before we forget. Because, you know, charging the entire system. And then realizing that you forgot to put the Schrader pin in, we'll ruin your day. Done that once or twice. So we're going to put our little side port in here. And... That is how we're going to add nitrogen to get our suction line in. Right now I am going to do the opposite here. So I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to slip it over my discharge line where my dryer was. Right there. And that's going to allow nitrogen to come out here, I'm going to slide this in. Sometimes if you leave a big chunk of braze on there, you may have to heat it up and then push it in, but that fit in pretty much all the way. So now we can go ahead, heat that up. So we can give it a little tap, get it in there all the way. And there it is. So now, let me just show you what we have to do with our suction line. So our suction line is the same size as the other one, our suction port, but you can see we're over here. Now they have this giant coil of lines up here, which I'm surprised that they do. It doesn't really need that. Uh, my, the only thing I can think of that they're using this for is a heat exchanger because the cap tube here, right where my hand is, goes in underneath the insulation and is wrapped around with the suction line. So they're using it to cool off the hot gas or you know, warm gas coming out of the condenser and evaporate any liquid that might be coming back to the compressor. So now we just need to get this into here. So I think what we can do is if I just kind of tighten this coil up, and take this here, and I should be able to just bend this 90 degrees here without kinking anything. Yeah, just because it's so pliable. Now, if I can get the angle correct, Yeah, we can, we can get that right in there. I'm probably going to have to heat this up and uh, and tap it in, but we can definitely get that in there. So, we backtrack this a little bit, and then I will put a clamp on it. We'll heat this up, and then we'll kind of force it in.
Okay. Okay, so what we're going to use for a dryer is one of these cap tube dryers. So what I'm going to do is just put the fitting on the outside of that and the fitting there. This um, port doesn't have a Schrader in there. We're going to take our cap tube and you can see we want to bury it, not all the way, but we need it in there pretty good. So just stick it in there and then remember what I said about crimping and brazing? This is the only time that this is pretty much allowed in my opinion is just crimp around that and there you go so now we can braise and braise and what I'm going to do is we will take the Schrader out of the low side here and we're going to put our gauge right on here now it's gonna get a little warm but Alright, so it's going to be venting out here, but this is going to be nitrogen here. So we can braise this, then what we'll do is we'll come in through the low side and vent out this way. So, right now, what you can do to make sure your gauges don't get all screwed up at all, is you can take a damp rag. I also like to do this so you don't burn the paint off. And kind of just tuck that around like that. and then. I can braise right in here pretty easily. I'm going down and away from this plastic. That's it there. You shut my gauge off. So now that's not hot at all. I can grab that without burning myself. So now what we're going to do is the opposite. So we're going to add nitrogen in through our low side, which is going to pressurize our evaporator as long as we don't have a um, solenoid coil in there, which we don't. And that's going to allow us to braise on the other side of this and vent out here. And that's it. We are done. Everything is connected. And you can see this here. I can grab that and not burn myself. I should have wrapped it, but you know what? I did not. So everything here is now done. So now we can vacuum it. 
Okay, my vacuum gauge is hooked up. This hooks to my meter and it reads one micron vacuum as one volt DC, so it's set on the DC range. Now it's time to vacuum, so these gauges here are closed. I need to get a new plastic glass for that. I knocked it off when I was taking it down here. Uh, Alright, so we're on. Hand wheels are closed. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the high and make sure that the low goes down. If the low does not go down, then we have a clog somewhere, more than likely in the cap tube. But open that up. So I'm going to put my thumb over the outlet of the vacuum pump and you can hear that coming out and you can also see that is going down. Okay, so now I can open up the low. And we're just going to let that sit until it just gets to 500. Okay, so we're below 500 there. Still going down a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now is just shut these hand wheels, shut my vacuum pump off, and uh, I'm just going to leave this here for now because I'm going to go up and eat dinner. After dinner, I'll come down and we'll charge it and make sure that it held the vacuum. And, uh, I mean, if they had a leak in it, it wouldn't have reached 500 microns, but let it sit, make sure that it holds that vacuum, and then we can charge it up and just finish up the show. Okay, so we're all set. I'm all wired up, and uh, just wired up according to the little schematic here. So the capacitor was actually separate. For whatever reason, it wasn't installed. Usually, capacitor is on. But the capacitor goes to the two terminals uh, that are on the relay, your main power line and one line of the fan goes to the overload. Your neutral and your other side of the fan go to number two on the relay, and that's it. It's just kind of a pain in the butt getting everything squished in there, but um, our vacuum's holding fine. We're still in a vacuum there. We're good to go. I have my tank on the scale right there, so it's uh, 12 ounces or 12.1 ounces. So I'm just going to bend down and hit the go on the scale. I have an electronic one. You should hear a click. Okay, we're going to dump our refrigerant in our high side here. So that's going in right here. We won't get any liquid back to the compressor because it has to go all the way through this condenser coil and then a little way back. So all the liquid would be evaporated before we get back to the compressor. We're opening up just the high. Make sure the low goes up. And it actually should take... I should be able to get the whole charge in, or most of the charge in in one shot, hopefully. Uh, maybe not quite. It's going kind of slow. We're at half a pound right now, so we'll just let it let it go in. I I should have what I should have done is it's kind of cold here in the cellar. I should have heated that tank up. If I heated that tank up, then I could have probably gotten this all in one shot but that's not a big thing um, we'll just plug this in let this run and we'll put the other basically six ounces in so let me grab an extension cord real quick to plug this in okay so we have our extension cord here I'm gonna plug this in now this does have a delay on it because that temperature control that's mounted right here is actually electronic so with the compressor's not going to turn on when I plug this in but the fan should Okay, so there's the fans. What we do is, is the compressor. Close off the high side here. And we'll get that extra six ounces in. We're just gonna slowly feed in through the low. That's gonna suck it in through the low side here. We don't wanna flood liquid directly back to the compressor. We wanna go slowly. That is our refrigerant charge. Now, because of the way that this is set up, okay. I'm just feeling up here. Air is getting sucked in here through the coil, blown out the front, so this is getting cold. We'll let this run a little bit. Now my pressures are going to be off a little bit because down here because it's probably uh, it's probably in the 
60s in the shop here. It's pretty a little chilly, so but it's definitely getting cold. Compressor sounds fine. We're nice and quiet. Our suction line here is coming back cool. Our liquid line lukewarm. The other thing too is just to feel your cap tube. You shouldn't have really a huge temperature difference in your cap tube. If you have, say this is warm here or room temperature and then your cap tube is cold, then you more than likely have a restriction somewhere here. And the cap tube is coiled up in here and that's nice and warm throughout. So cap tube isn't clogged. Okay, for 134A, we're actually, we're not bad. On the low, usually I like to see 20 to 25. We're probably about 15 now. The head, which I would like to see around 150, right now is uh, 120. So, considering the temperature down here, I'm actually happy with that. Everything feels nice, feels like it should. It's blowing nice and cold. Now, when I get this to the job site and actually put it back into the unit, I will double check the charge. You can also do a uh, superheat reading just to make sure everything's all right. But um, since we weighed everything in, I'm more than confident that we, we have what we need to. So that actual change in pressure there, or that little bit low on the, on the low and a little bit low on the high, uh, right now at least I'm attributing more to the actual temperature down here than anything wrong with it. Because this here... This, this is blowing out ice cold, ice cold there. Okay, so I hope that gives you guys an idea of how to put in the compressor using nitrogen as a barrier to prevent all that carbon buildup from forming inside the pipes. Um, once I get this where it's supposed to be, namely underneath the region, refrigerating in actual space in the correct ambient temperature, I'm going to double check the charge and double check the pressures just to make sure everything is okay. I'm pretty confident that everything will be fine just because we weight charged in by the correct nameplate weight and we have a new dryer and everything in there so we shouldn't have an issue. So if you guys like this video, like, subscribe, comment. Um, thank you guys for joining me on this one and we'll hope to see you soon on the next one and I hope to get some more work related content out for you guys.